Hello again. I'm Bernie Norcott Mahaney. I work at the Kansas City Public Library at the Blueford Branch and also with Johnson County Community College. During the month of April, I am reciting poems aloud uh, in honor of National Poetry Month. Um, I'm doing this because I like to share poetry and because I think poetry is meant to be read aloud. So, um, you know, taking poems that, that I found um, that are in the public domain. Um, there are lots of great newer poems, uh, but I had not asked for copyright uh, permission to, to uh, recite them. So without that, um, I don't want to go on the record um, for doing it. I thought I would take some time at any rate and take some, some poems that are well known, or at least some poets who are well known, and try to recite some of these poems. Um, I'm hoping that <clears throat> you too will then decide to get a book of poetry out of the library or from a bookstore and read some of these poems aloud. Um, next best thing would be to get hold of um, audio books of poetry where you can hear professionals read um, and they of course do a stunning job. In some cases the poet him or herself will do, uh, will do the reading and some poets are really good not every poet is the best interpreter, though, of his or her verse. Um, today's poem, I haven't done any Shakespeare poems yet, and I'd like to try to get uh, two uh, Shakespeare pieces in. Shakespeare's primarily known as a dramatist, but the dramas that he wrote were almost all in verse. Um, there are some dramas that have large prose sections, but even those uh, dramas are, are mostly in verse, and then some dramas are entirely in verse. Um, one play, uh, Henry V, has a famous sort of um, speech delivered by the chief character, Henry V, um, before an important battle, the Battle of Agincourt uh, in, in France. Uh, that battle, where the, the, the English were greatly outnumbered by the French, but they had um, longbows, and those British longbows managed to do a lot of damage to the French before the French could get close enough to do damage to the English. Uh, the English won, uh, so it was a major sort of surprise victory on the part of the English. So this is the big rally speech, uh, you know, the sort of, sort of pep talk that, um, that you like to hear. I don't need to say anything about Shakespeare. Um, the, the works of Shakespeare are amazing um, and there is no other author I think in all of English literature who has the command of language that Shakespeare does. Shakespeare has a wonderful command of the English language, uh, really makes it sing, um, is sometimes playful with it, uh, does some really nice stuff. Um, there are other great authors, um, and there are great 20th century authors and 21st century authors but none of them quite approach the mastery and the ease and the grace of Shakespeare. So, um, can't do sort of English poetry without doing some Shakespeare. And because most of his poetry is in plays, I thought I would start by doing um, this St. Crispin's Day speech from uh, Henry IV. Uh, in, this speech is delivered by Henry uh, to his men. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand a tiptoe when the day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say, Tomorrow is St. Crispian. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on Crispian's day. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot, but he'll remember with advantage what feats he did that day. Then shall our names, familiar in his mouths as household words, Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin and Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother, be he ne'er so vile. This day shall 
gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England, now abed, shall think themselves accursed they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap, whilst, they, whilst any speak that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. So this is the St. Crispin's Day speech from Henry V uh, by Shakespeare. And uh, if you've never seen um, Kenneth Branagh's stunning film of Henry V, uh, it's well worth seeing. He does a great job with that speech. Um, there's also a nice, uh, though it's rather old, but it's, it's a quite a colorful uh, version done by Laurence Olivier, um, where you can also get this speech. But Branagh's really has a sort of manly bravado that Olivier's uh, does not. Um, so, at any rate, um, go get some poetry, read some poetry aloud to yourself, um, get in the habit of reading poetry. Um, it's a good habit to get into. So, that's it for today. I will be back tomorrow, and um, good reading. <laughs>